Many people enjoy the sport of skiing because it is both relaxing and exhilarating at the same time. They love the feeling of moving fast and gliding through the trees. Skiing is a sport that takes years and years to master. Even though it is fairly easy to pick up, it is extremely technical and a skier can spend a lifetime trying to perfect his or her technique. This video will help unravel some of the physics behind skiing. An understanding of the mechanics will help skiers better understand the interaction between gravity, the snow, their skis, and their body. While there are many components to having excellent skiing technique, turning is among the most important. For example, experienced skiers strive towards making a perfectly carved turn. A perfectly carved turn is made while only one edge of the skis is making contact with the snow, and the whole length of the ski follows the same path, making railroad tracks in the snow. This minimal contact minimizes the friction between the skis and the snow, meaning the skier loses less energy as he makes his way down the slope. In order to make this happen, we will investigate the important physics concepts behind making a perfect turn. First, we will look at the concept of conservation of energy. For now, we will assume friction between the skis and snow, air resistance of the skier, and electrochemical energy absorbed by the skier's body are negligible. At the top of a hill, where the skier begins standing still, all of his energy is in the form of potential energy. This means that since the skier is at a high elevation, he has the potential to accelerate due to gravity. His total potential energy, measured in a unit called joules, will be the product of his mass in kilograms, the acceleration due to gravity, which is approximated at 10 meters per second squared, and his elevation at that position in meters. If a skier of weight 50 kilograms is standing at the top of a mountain of height 500 meters, we can solve for his potential energy to be 250,000 joules. Since he is standing still, this potential energy is equal to his total energy. Therefore, at any point on the mountain, his total energy should be equal to 250,000 joules. When the skier reaches the bottom of the mountain, he will no longer have any potential energy since he will be at an elevation of zero meters. This means that all of the skier's energy is in the form of kinetic energy and will therefore be moving at a very high speed. His kinetic energy, also measured in joules, is one half times the product of his mass, once again measured in kilograms, and his speed squared, measured in meters per second. Since we know that his total energy is 250,000 joules, we can solve for his speed at the bottom of the hill. By rearranging the equation, we see that his velocity is equal to the square root of two times his total energy divided by his mass, which is 100 meters per second. Keep in mind that 100 meters per second is extremely fast. Skiers are constantly checking their speed so that they do not reach a velocity above approximately 30 meters per second. At any point on the middle of the hill, he will have a mixture of potential and kinetic energy, which sums to his total energy of 250,000 joules. As long as we know his elevation, we can find his velocity at any point on the hill. The more elevation the skier loses, the more his speed increases. Realistically, not all of the potential energy that the skier begins with will be converted to kinetic energy. Now we will factor in friction to the equation, however, we will continue to ignore air resistance and electrochemical energy loss. Some of the initial total energy that the skier has at the top of the hill will be dissipated by friction. This energy will be turned into heat and the skier will have a smaller amount of total energy at the bottom of the hill. In order to minimize the energy lost, the skier needs to minimize the friction between his or her skis and the snow. This is done when the skier makes a carved turn where only the edges of the skis are making contact with the snow. The skier applies pressure to the front of the skis, makes them bend so that the skis follow the same path without sliding.
These are called railroad turns because the tracks made by the skis look like railroad tracks. The more forward pressure the skier can apply to the skis, the cleaner the turn will be and the more energy will be converted to kinetic energy. For example, let's say that the coefficient of friction between the skis and snow is 0.1, which we will call mu. This is the ratio of the force of friction, which is acting on the skis against the direction of motion, to the normal force, which is the force of the ground against the skier. The weight of the skier is equal to the normal force, which is, let's say, 500 newtons. We can multiply by the coefficient of friction, or mu, to find that the force of friction is 50 newtons. To calculate the change in total energy, or work done by friction, we multiply the force of friction by the distance traveled by the skier. If the skier has traveled 1,000 meters down the hill, we can multiply that by the force of friction of 50 newtons to find that the work done by friction is 50,000 joules. This means that as the skier travels down the hill, 50,000 joules of his energy will not be converted to kinetic energy. In order to understand this in context, in the previous example we found that the skier began with a total of 250,000 joules of potential energy. This would mean that he would reach the bottom of the hill with a total of 200,000 joules of energy. The more the skier's turns are carved, the less contact the skis will have with the snow, meaning less energy is dissipated by friction, and more of the energy can be converted to kinetic energy to make the skier ski faster. As mentioned earlier, skiers strive for clean arc turns. When the turns come from carving rather than sliding, friction is minimized, meaning that less energy is lost. To make these arc turns, the skier must apply forward pressure to the skis so that they bend to make an arc. The force made by the pressure that the skier is pushing onto the snow is being countered by the normal force and the force of the snow pushing against the skis. While in the midst of a turn, the normal force is acting as a centripetal force. This is a certain type of force where the acceleration does not actually change the speed of the skier, but rather changes the direction that the skier is skiing in. The larger the normal force, the faster the skier will change directions and the sharper the turns will be. Sharper turns means less sliding, so friction is minimized. Centripetal force can be calculated by the product of the mass and the velocity squared divided by the radius. So in this case, the radius of the turn is equal to the mass of the skier times the speed of the skier squared divided by the normal force of the snow on the skis. The skier should strive towards applying pressure to the front of the skis so that he can make tighter, more carved turns. Understanding all of these concepts can greatly improve one's skiing ability and technique. Many forces affect skiers as they make their way down the hill, so it is beneficial to understand how to maximize the helpful forces and minimize the prohibiting forces. In general, these physics concepts are very applicable and are very relevant to many of the phenomena around us. If you try and pay attention to more of the motions in the situation surrounding us, you may notice and understand more of the physics that makes things act the way they do.